Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're gonna to go over the ASVAB paragraph comprehension portion of the ASVAB military placement exam. I'm gonna put up a problem, it's just a sample problem. I'd pause the video, I'd have a notebook in front of you, do the best you can, unpause the video, and watch how I solve that problem. The way you get good at any of these kind of standardized tests, it's through practice. The more you practice, the better you get. All right, let's get started here. In this video, we're gonna go over 15 questions of paragraph comprehension for the ASVAB test. You could get more resources and more support and help with this webpage right here or this app. You could get it at the Apple App Store or on Google Play. Tons of resources, including one-on-one -on -one, um, personal tutoring if you need any additional help. So this is the first problem right here. I'll go ahead and read it. Pause the video, do the best you can on solving it. When we think of security for the home, most of us think of devices that physically hinder another person. Researchers have found that some simple, everyday, inexpensive objects can be as effective as more expensive security systems. The question is, which of the following sentences would most likely come next in the paragraph. For example, leaving the radio on during the day can make a home sound occupied. Well, that does meet the criteria, inexpensive objects, not actually the physically hindering someone. Leaving notes on doors or windows, well, that's actually counter of what the paragraph is saying. The paragraph is saying things to prevent people knowing you're gone to, for security. So that's letting everybody know you're not home. So it can't be B. C, for example, equipping the home with a costly, well, we're talking about inexpensive things, so it can't be C. D, for example, doors should only be opened after a visitor. We're actually not talking about being home and people coming. We're talking about uh, not being home. So B, C, and D do not meet the criteria. Correct answer. Answer A. Okay, question number two. The fable always explicitly states a moral truth. So a fable is a moral truth. The fairy tale leaves all decisions about meaning up to us, whether we wish to make any application or life to our life or simply enjoy the fantastic events it tells about. Okay, so it's differentiating between a fable and a fairy tale. That's what the paragraph's about. The question is, according to the passage, a fable differs from a fairy tale in that a fable has a happy ending, an ethical meaning, a complicated plot, unusual events taking place. So they're asking, what does a fable have? Well, a fable always states a moral truth. So a moral truth would also be an ethical meaning. Correct answer, answer B. Number three, the woman's flying training detachment was the brainchild of Jacqueline Cochran, the famous flyer. So the woman's flyer training detachment is based on this one woman. Because of the overwhelming demand for qualified men to fly combat during World War II, she was able to persuade the Army to train women pilots to ferry military aircraft from manufacturers to embarkation points for later shipment overseas. Okay, so we're talking about this woman who has created this individual detachment. The Army only wanted men, and they needed so many, she was able to convince them to let them start to ferry things over. The question is, the author implies that the primary motivation for establishing a training program for women pilots during World War II was the Army's wish to utilize women's abilities. Actually, it wasn't really, they didn't want to use women's abilities. It says here, she was only able to persuade them because of a thing. Unavailability of qualified male pilots, that is true, and that's right from the paragraph. Fame of Flyer Jacqueline Cochran. Well, the program, um, the author implies that primary motivation for establishing 
a training program for women was this. Well, it wasn't really her fame. It was specifically here because of the lack of male pilots. So correct answer B, existence of the women's flying training detachment. Its existence did not have the army encourage it. It was really because there were no qualified male pilots. Correct answer B. Number four, according to Mark Twain, October is a particularly dangerous month to speculate in stocks. Others include July and January, September, April, November, May, March, June, December, August, and February. What was Mark Twain's point? So Mark Twain, you know, great American author, uh, always had these funny things to say. And he's saying that that one month was bad, but actually every other month was bad as well. So what was his point? His point is that the stock market is always going to be dangerous to invest in. So let's see which answer says that. Certain times of the year are better than others. That's not the case. October is an especially bad month. That's not the case. Speculating in stocks is not a safe investment for your money. That is the case. Always a good time to make a sound investment in stocks. He's actually telling you, this month and every other month is a bad time to invest. Therefore, C is the correct answer. Speculating in stocks is not a safe investment for your money. Question number five. Physical sound energy is transmitted through the external air. This word here, I don't even know what that means. And then the middle air to the inner air, where it creates pressure waves in the fluid of the Again, it doesn't really matter what that word, how you pronounce it or what it means. There, hairs on the organ of the corti are moved by the pressure waves. So it sounds out here. It goes in through the external ear, middle ear, into the inner ear where it moves these hairs around. And then they start to feel those nerve impulses. So the question is, where is the organ of the corti located? Well, it tells you it's on the outside, into the middle ear, and then all the way into the inner ear. So the correct answer is going to be the inner ear. I look up here. Inner ear is answer C. That's the only other. That's the only one that makes sense. Correct answer C. Number six. A period of time is usually measured by comparing it with another period of time. So we're saying time is relative to another set of times. For example, a year on Mercury is equal to, a year on Uranus is equal to, and then the question is, according to the passage, the way time is usually measured shows that time is flexible, that means it could bend and change, nothing about that in there, relative, well that's exactly what that passage is about, it is saying time is measured relative to another time, so that's the correct answer. Cyclical, meaning it goes in cycles, that's not correct. Calendar-based, not correct. Correct answer is answer B, relative, relative to another time. A lot of these are like vocab. You have to know what those words mean. Question seven. Physicists seek out those features of nature that are simple and universal. The secret of their success is not so much a matter of finding answers as it is to asking the correct questions. The trick is keeping the question simple, sticking to the universal phenomena, simple questions that can be answered clearly and unambiguously, means clearly, by careful observation of repeated experiments and logical thinking. So this passage is about a physicist, scientist. It's not that they ask complex questions, they ask simple questions, that are easy to test. So that's what the passage is about. The question, which of the following questions is most clearly an example of the kind of discussions in the paragraph? How the destruction of the environment is prevented? Wow, that's gigantic, that's all over the place. That is not a simple question. What can people do to make their lives happier? Very complex question. C, how fast do stones of a particular size fall? Pretty simple question. You just drop that rock, 
you measure it. That's the kind of question they're talking about in this passage. How large was a meteorite that was observed last night? Also complex. So correct answer is answer C. It is the only simple question up there. Again, this reading comprehension isn't really what you think about the passage at all. It's just the information you're able to take out of that passage and apply. So, I mean, you can tell why it's an important skill if you have written directions. Can you decode those and answer the correct question? All right, question number eight. The duty of the lighthouse keeper is to keep the lighthouse burning no matter what. So most important, that lighthouse keeper has to keep, it, keep the lighthouse going so that ships will be warned of the presence of dangerous rocks. So the paragraph is really just the duty for that lighthouse keeper. The question is, if a shipwreck should occur near the lighthouse, even though he would like to aid in the rescue of the ship's crew and passengers, the lighthouse keeper must stay at his lighthouse. That's very clearly the first sentence. Rush to their aid, no. His job is to keep the light going. Turn out the light, that doesn't even make sense quickly sound the siren. There's no context if there's a siren or anything else in that paragraph. Correct answer is A. Very clearly, his job is to man that lighthouse. All right, question number nine. Uh, if you're still here, you're doing a fantastic job. Well done, kudos to you. Maybe pause the video, stand up, stretch for a minute, come back, and we'll do the next six problems or so. New to the channel, think about subscribing. All right, question number nine. In certain areas, water is so scarce that every attempt is made to conserve it. So water is important. For instance, on one oasis in the desert, the amount of water necessary for each tree is carefully determined. All right, so we're saying water is scarce, and then we have these palm trees. Uh, the amount of water they get is prescribed or determined. How much water is each day palm? tree given? Well, no water at all. No, that's not what it's saying. It's saying it gives it a specific amount. Exactly the amount required. That is correct, right? That's exactly what it says up here. Water only if it's healthy. That's not in the paragraph at all. Water on alternate days, none of that's in the paragraph at all. Correct answer. Answer B, exactly the amount required. Question 10. From a building designer standpoint, three things that make a home livable are the client, the size, and the amount of money the client has. According to the passage, to make a home livable, prospective piece of land makes a little difference. Well, it's not really about the land at all in there. It can be built on any piece of land. The fact that those two are about land makes you think that it's neither of them. The design must fit the owner's income and size. Well, that's two of the three. That's a much better answer than A and B. The design must fit the designer's income. Well, there's nothing about the designer's income in there. So D makes no sense. C makes the most sense. It's two of the three. So correct answer is answer C. Question 11. A business letter has six parts instead of five. The extra part is called the inside address. I don't know what that is, but we don't need to know what that is. It is placed just above the salutation. The other five parts are just like a friendly letter. So this thing is about there are six parts to a business letter instead of the five. That sixth part is this inside address. Question is, what is the extra part of the business letter? Well, it's the inside address. Correct answer, answer C right there. Before I even go to the question, I have an idea in my head what the passage is about. Question 12. Use correct spelling, punctuation, capitalization, letter form, and paragraphing. So do all these things. When you have finished your letter through and rewrite it only if you are not satisfied. So do all these things. Check it. If you don't like it, rewrite it. When should you rewrite your letter? Well, it's telling you only after you review it and you don't like it. So let's see these. When it sounds good, doesn't make sense. When you use correct spelling, doesn't make sense. If you're satisfied with all the parts, 
Again, doesn't make sense. You're satisfied. Why would you rewrite it? If you are not satisfied with any of the parts, then you rewrite it. So correct answer, answer D right there. All right, number 13, a little bit longer passage. Mineral-rich Zaire is one of the world's most important sources of uranium. It also has copper, tin, diamonds, gold, cobalt, zinc, ag, palm oil, kernels, cotton seed, rubber, cotton lint, cotton lint, coffee, peanuts, sweet potato, yams, cassava. All right, so there's a list of a million things that mineral-rich Zaire has. Question, how many cotton products does Zaire produce? Well, I got to go back and reread that to figure it out. So here are the ag products. Here's cotton seed, cotton lint. I guess the stuff in your pocket. And that's it. So Zaire has two different types of cotton products. So correct answer, answer D right here. Number 14, they returned to the beach where blankets spotted the slope to the water, an advancing wall of clouds, black and gray, darkening the expanse of the ground beneath the approach from the west. To the east and above them, the sky remained clear, the sun warm, as if collaborating in the deception. So a lot of storm clouds, but there's also clear skies, and there's a deception, meaning a falsity. The deception referred to in the passage is that the sky is clear, there is no storm approaching, the sun is warm, it is too cold to swim. Correct answer has to be answer B because there is a storm approaching. So the deception is that there is no storm approaching. All right, let's keep going. Last one, number 15, the Tuskegee Airmen were the first black military avi aviators in the U.S. Air Corps, a precursor to the U.S. Air Force. Trained at the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama, they flew more than 15,000 individual sorties in Europe and North Africa during World War II. Their impressive performance earned them more than 150 distinguished flying crosses and helped encourage the eventual integration of the U.S. Armed Forces. Pretty long passage talking about the airmen, who they were, kind of how it evolved into the Air Force. What can be inferred from this passage? I thought we'll just read through these and see which one makes the most sense for the next kind of step or the next level. The Tuskegee Airmen were also naval officers. That's nowhere in there. There's nothing about the Navy in there at all. A's out. Due to segregation, the airmen did not receive any military decorations. It specifically says they were highly decorated, so B doesn't make sense. B's out. President FDR was responsible for the segregation of the U.S. Armed Forces. Again, there is no mention of FDR in there at all, so that one can't be it. So it has to be answer D. Let's see if it makes sense. Prior to World War II, the U.S. Armed Forces were segregated. That is true, um, and it is also the only one that even is related to that passage right there. All right, well, well done if you made it to the end of this video. Think about subscribing if it was helpful. This channel is all about helping you do better on standardized tests, and the way to do that is to practice. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Here's another resource you could look to for more information and support in taking your ASVAB military placement exam.